Uh, thank you all for coming. Appreciate it very much. Um, this is something that we threw together at the last minute. And at this point of the show, I'm free to answer any questions, anything you people want to know about the business, the drums, whatever. I'm all yours. So far away. How long have you been playing? <laughs> about 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, well, to get it going, my name is Jeff Plate. I have been in this area since I was a boy. I was born in Horses, New York. And since I was about 12 years old, you know, I'd say about nine or 10, I knew I wanted to be a drummer. The, uh, the first band that I saw that completely got me into this was a band called Chicago. Danny Serafin on drums. I remember being a kid watching live at Caribou Ranch on, on ABC television. And then, when I was a young jock, at 13 years old, my hip fell apart, and the next summer I saw Kiss on the Midnight Special. There's probably not a lot of people here who are old enough to remember the Midnight Special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was it. I saw Peter Chris. I saw Gene Simmons' tongue hanging on the ground and Paul Stanley <laughs> spinning around, and, and that's, that's what brought me here. So... All these years later, I've been playing 30 plus years. I, uh, I am fortunate enough to make a living playing drums. I was struggling at this for a long time. Joe Carberry, Bruce Perrin, two, also two big reasons I'm here because these guys were my, my peers in my competition back in the day. And we always played around in a lot of cover bands. Uh, Kevin McCarthy and I, Michael and I, we've all kind of shared each other's services at some point and done a lot of, had a lot of fun together, let's put it that way. But um, when I was 18 and just coming out of high school, there was no other option for me but to play drums. And going to school, going to college had no real, I was not excited about that whatsoever. Um, and also too, not to date myself too much, but back in that day, we didn't have the computer we didn't have the internet, which is for you young people, it's kind of hard to comprehend that. But when I went to my guidance counselor, he was telling me that I needed to go to this school, that school, because the marching band program was great. And that was the last thing that I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do, and I knew it then. Um, having said that, though, for all you young kids that are in school, take advantage of that, because that was one thing looking back on my past that I wish I would have really taken advantage of while I was there. The, uh, the theory, the, uh, the discipline, the rudiments, all that stuff that you can learn in school, and it's free, you know? You're in school, you might as well make use of it. It was something that when I, looking back years later, I really wish I would have at least had the sense to stick with that. Um, but it wasn't to be. I didn't know any other way to get where I wanted to go other than not being in marching band. I needed to be behind a drum kit, playing in a band, and I figured someday I was gonna be a big rock star and blah, blah, blah. And I'm one of the lucky ones. Amen. So, thank you, Mike. Amen. Like I said, I make a living playing drums, and, and, and that goes to a lot of different levels. I play in the trans Siberian Orchestra, which is one of the most popular touring My wife is my biggest fan. She leads the cheer. But I play in the trans Siberian Orchestra, which is, if you haven't ever seen the show, come see the show. And I don't just say that because I'm the drummer in the band. It will be the coolest show you've ever seen, guaranteed. And ask, any, ask anybody here who's seen that show. Great light show. It's got a great light show. A lot of fire, a lot of lasers, a lot of everything. Um, so that, TSO is my main gig. I supplement that by doing a lot of other things, but mainly I get uh, the satisfaction of playing drums all year round with a number of different people, a number of different acts. I, uh, I used to do some teaching, and it's something I would like to get back into someday. Bobby Williams, who was here earlier, if any of you saw him, that was my first drum instructor. 
when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, Bobby Williams had me sitting at a drum pad for two hours a night practicing my books. And here again, for you kids, you don't get to do what I do by playing video games and texting on your phone and watching TV. I used to practice two to three hours a night. Ask anybody in this room who's tried to do this. You got to. didn't have video games and cell phones. Uh, it's true. I had three television channels, and if, if the wind was blowing right, I had four. But it didn't really matter. I could have had 80 television channels, and I would have still done this. I was off the school bus. I was practicing two and three hours a day. I did not go out and, and have fun until that was done. And actually, that was part of my fun, because I was getting better all the time. Um, here again, I go back to my, my peers, the guys who pushed me, Joey and Bruce. Um, I had to go out to a club and play, and these guys used to stand there and watch me, and vice versa. And you don't want to, you don't want to let your guard down. You got to be up. So we had a we had a very friendly competition, and it's getting friendlier by the minute, isn't it, Bruce? Indeed, indeed. But the 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 main point of what I'm saying is is for any of you young people out there, whether you want to play drums or guitar or whatever you want to do, rock band ain't gonna do it for you. You got to get with an instructor. You got to. Get behind your practice pad, learn your rudiments, get a metronome, learn time, and stick with it. And it's going to be frustrating because all these kids want everything now. They want to pick up drumsticks and, and, be, a, and be a player, and it doesn't work that way. Um, the other thing, too, is, is for the young folks, and also for the, for the adults here, too. Um, this takes a lot of teamwork, mainly starts in the family. If you, if you young guys need a new cymbal or a new set of guitar strings, you better do some uh, yard raking and snow shoveling in the wintertime and, and, and make yourself worth it because it goes a long way. See, the two young guys, they don't even want to listen to me. They're heading out the door already. <laughs> Did he say two hours of practice? I do that in a month. So anyhow, it goes the other way too. For the adults, if you've got kids, if you've got any, any young people in your, in your lives that you want to encourage, you have to get that point home to them. You've got to play. And there's no other way to get good. I mean, Derek Jeter didn't just pick up a baseball bat and go up and start hitting the baseball. He's been doing it for his whole life. Um, I've been doing this for my whole life, for all intents and purposes. I, uh, I have been very lucky, and also I've made my own luck. I've... Uh, I left horse heads, knowing that I was not going to be, I wasn't going to get where I wanted to go here. But like Bruce always says about horse heads, it's a good place to hone your art. You have a lot of uh, ability around here to get your act together before you go someplace else and uh, realize you weren't ready. So when I felt I was ready, first I headed to Florida, I came back home had my tail between my legs, and then I went to Boston. In Boston, I met a number of different people that I started playing with. I started playing full-time cover bands. Um, I did some recordings. I met a guy out there named Dave Desenzo. And for any of you guys out there, look him up. Yeah, he's a monster. He will make me look like a child with one hand and one foot. Um, but he was my instructor for about two years, and I really improved a lot once I got with him. But along with that, I was just meeting more people all the time. The more I, the more I played, the more I was out, the more I was meeting people. I ended up in a band called uh, Wicked Witch in the late 1980s. And this was through a guitarist who had just come back from the Guitar Institute of Technology. He had just about got the D.O. gig. He was awesome. <laughs> My first audition for him, I sucked. I didn't get the gig. I came back to him about three months later, and I got the gig. 